Welcome to Study Abroad for Education Students. This is a session that's part of Study Abroad Week here at DePaul. And we are uh, really excited uh, to talk to students and to welcome them uh, to uh, learning more about Study Abroad and how to plan ahead. Um, and we are going to start with some introductions. Uh, my name is Car Miller and I work at the uh, DePaul uh, Study Abroad office. I'm actually a DePaul alumni as well from the College of Education. So I'm a proud alum of <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> and um, I studied abroad with DePaul back in 2003. I went to Paris, France and it Boy, did it leave a lasting uh, impression on, on me and on my personal and professional path. So I'm very delighted that I'm here and that I could talk with students and, and share with them about um, you know, their opportunities, uh, how to explore opportunities uh, to have an international learning experience as part of their academic career here at DePaul. Um, also with us today, we have uh, the Director of Advising at the College of Education, Nancy Hashimoto. And we have the Academic Advising Assistant, Sandra Tanksley. Uh, and we are also gonna hear from an alumni, uh, one of our alumni who has participated on uh, a short-term program uh, with DePaul, and this is Katie Pollocky. Um, so she's here with us today to share her experience and, and her story. All right, so let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, a study abroad, and, and I'll give you just a general overview of, of what study abroad looks like at DePaul. Uh, we have lots of programs. We probably have, we have, let's see, 91 programs in 44 countries. So we try to have a little bit of something for everyone. Um, we have programs that are short term, which means students can study abroad between one and three weeks. Uh, you can, students can travel during the December intercession, during spring break, and even during summertime. Uh, and then students can also study abroad on term-long programs. This is where a student would take classes at a partner school overseas. We have lots of partner schools that we work with around the world. And you might study abroad for an entire semester, like a 16-week semester abroad, or you could go for an entire academic year. Uh, so we have students who go on the fall quarter and in the winter and spring terms. And we even have a term long program that runs in summer to Shanghai, uh, which is great for world languages uh, education students. Um, the different types of programs that we offer, we have faculty led short term programs. So this is where you would take a course with a DePaul professor. Uh, and then after you finish that course, you would travel with your professor, with your fellow student group to the country that you were learning about and focusing on in your course. And then we have non-faculty led programs where you, know, you would go to a partner school and maybe work with an on-site director um, at a partner school overseas. So you can go abroad uh, during summer, fall, December, winter, spring, spring break, uh, and spring quarter. So any time of the year, really. Um, and then each program has a program fee. Uh, and so the way that the financial structure works at DePaul Study Abroad is that you always have tuition for the number of credit hours that you take. Uh, and your tuition will stay the same if you stay enrolled in uh, 12 to 18 credit hours. So you won't have to worry about any sort of increase in tuition if you can stay at that 18 credit hour limit. Um, and then you'll have a program fee that's added on. Each program has a different program fee uh, and it includes different things for different programs. So for example, with short-term programs, you'll notice that the program fee uh, might include airfare, a round trip, you know, airfare and that there's a group flight where everyone travels together. Uh, you might see that on a short term program fee, you'll have uh, meals included and accommodations. Maybe we, you know, we've already kind of packaged, you know, the hotel and the on site transportation. We might have packaged that all together for you. Um, there are other programs that have lower program fees. Uh, because maybe the airfare is not included. Maybe that's something you get on your own and you can use reward points or other things uh, to go towards that. Um, so each program has a different program fee and you can find the program fees listed on our websites as you search for programs uh, on each, each page of the DePaul. So I would recommend that you go to studyabroad.depaul.edu to really take a look at the programs and, and how the program fees uh, range. We really try to have affordable programs for students. Um, 
um, we, you know, I say that study abroad does not have to be expensive. You can make it make it work. Um, and I will talk about scholarships in a moment because that's really important to help you fund your study abroad program. Um, and we have some some recommended programs, you know, for education students. Um, there there are some phenomenal programs uh, abroad with our partners uh, at University College Cork. Uh, it's what we call a full curriculum program. You could take courses in anything there in Ireland. You could you know uh, take early childhood education and 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 other uh, physical physical exercise uh, exercise science courses. And uh, so I think that's a great program. Athens, Greece. We work with our partners at uh, College Year in Athens, CYA. And that's a great, uh, great program to earn a lot of your liberal studies learning domains. Um, although I realize that as, as um, you know, pre-service teachers, that you'll be doing, um, you know, student teaching and that that will also kind of, um, uh, that would uh, fulfill your experiential learning requirement. And I know Nancy and Sandra can kind of speak to that a little bit later on in the presentation. Um, but there are certain programs that we really recommend for education students. One of them is a short-term Portugal program, which, which uh, Katie can speak to in a little bit. Um, but think about study abroad as a way, you know, to fulfill uh, your liberal studies learning domains or get some open electives um, and try to fit that into your academic uh, plan while you're at DePaul. Um, in terms of scholarships, there are lots of scholarships out there. So I want uh, to encourage students to check out our scholarships web page. Uh, this is where you'll learn about scholarships that are, are given from our office. So DePaul Study Abroad awards scholarships in the amount of $1,000 to $5,000 uh, to students. And um, those awards are given to students based on a combination of your academic merit, so your GPA is a good measure of that, and your financial financial need. Uh, so we work with the financial aid office to, to help figure out, you know, which of our students demonstrate high financial need. And we try as best as we can to award scholarships to students that, that demonstrate that need. Um, I'd also recommend that you look at external scholarships, you know, scholarships that are outside of DePaul, outside of our office. Um, you know, we, we have a website that will give you links to the Gilman scholarship. So for example, let's say you pursue a term long program uh, and you want to go to Athens, you know, apply for the Benjamin Gilman scholarship through the US Department of State, because the State Department, they want more students, they want more Americans to go abroad and engage in citizen diplomacy. It's really important right now that that people build these intercultural bridges and cross cultural, you know, bridges and, and develop friendships with people, of, uh, you know, in other places. Um, and so they'll fund that. Uh, there's the Fund for Education Abroad. Uh, there's a bunch of scholarships out there, so, so really hunt for those. Um, I would also recommend that as you search for scholarships, that you look for scholarships based on criteria that are relevant for you. Uh, for example, you know, think about the identities that you hold. You know, um, uh, do, are you a female in higher education? There are scholarships for that. Are you, uh, you know, are you affiliated with certain religious organizations? There are scholarships for Jewish students. You know, uh, there are. So think about, uh, you know, cultural heritage. You know, I'm so I'm part Italian, and I wanted to study abroad in France, and I managed to get there. And I found an organization called the Daughters of Italy, and they had a scholarship, and and you only had to be Italian and want to go abroad. So I contacted them and said, Can I still apply for this? And I'm not going to Italy, but you know, can I apply? And I was eligible, and I won the scholarship. So I recommend, you know, that. That, that you make a list of, 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 of um, identities or roles uh, and, and hunt for scholarships based on that. You know, look for scholarships on based on destination that you're going to, the curricular area that you study, your year in school, uh, identity. So, so really, I, I hope that that helps in terms of uh, scholarship hunting. But the money's out there, so you just got to find it. Um, okay, so I would like to, at this point, I, I, I know that I talk a lot, I'm quite verbose, but I would like to uh, take a moment to uh, invite um, and uh, invite a point of view and perspective from our, one of our academic advisors at, at the College of Education. So I'm going to turn this over at this point to, to Nancy so that she can share some insights with you uh, as well. Thanks, Thank Nancy, you. for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Um, I do have a question for uh, Kashanda and Gabby. Um, are you able to tell us what your majors are? Um, I'm, um, this is Kishanda. My major is um, elementary education. Great. 
Um, my name is Gabby, and I'm, I'm also an elementary ed major. Okay. Well, that makes it easy because you're both the same, right? So. <laughs> Um, so the question here, when is it suggested for COE students to typically do study abroad? Um, and, and it does vary by major. So, so that's why I wanted to ask with early, I'm sorry, with elementary education, as you know, courses are not offered all the time in elementary ed, um, but they do offer them more than one quarter. So, um, for example, EE 324 may be offered in fall and winter. But not in spring. And so um, I, it makes it a little easier than some other majors to be able to plan study abroad. Uh, usually it is best to do during first year and second year only because in, in most cases that's when you have the most flexibility. You have the most learning domains to do, you have time to pick up the education courses if, you, if you're going for a full quarter um, or even longer. And, and so you have the most flexibility. Um, it certainly is possible to do it in the third year, um, maybe even into senior year, uh, but it's really going to uh, take some planning on your part and in conjunction with your advisor, Kevin. So if you know now that you want to go to Italy and you know that you're gonna do that in fall quarter of your third year, your junior year and you're a sophomore now, then he can help plan around that. And so he can map out, okay, don't take these learning domains because you'll take those when you go to Italy. You're not gonna take these education courses now, but we can move them around to different quarters. Um, so planning is probably the, the paramount thing here. So as, as early as you're able to know when you're going to go, that's the best uh, situation because then we could work with that and, and kind of plan around it. Um, so I think I kind of covered the second that's piece great. too, right? That's um, great. Yeah, I, I love it. And that's, that's really key that, that students come early and, and plan early. And I always, I always tell them, you know, study abroad early because you, you can, at DePaul, you can go as a freshman. We have first year abroad programs to help students fulfill their LSP 112 focal point seminar, you know, course requirement. We have identities abroad for sophomores who are looking to fulfill their LSP 200 course, you know, in the seminar in multiculturalism. And so I think there's a myth that students should wait until they're a junior or senior to, to study abroad, but really that's, that's not the case. So I think, I think Nancy, you make a great point about about planning early and planning ahead is, is really important, um, especially to know that certain courses are going to be offered in a certain sequence or, or when they're going to be offered. And so knowing when to go abroad is going to be important and what to save for being abroad is, is really important. So that's great. Thank you. Um, and I'll just kind of reiterate, you know, that the last bullet point about credit hours limit, you know, sometimes we have students who when they go abroad, they want to take more than 18 credit hours. They, there's an extra, you know, they want to take four or five classes abroad, not just three or four, and they can go over the credit hours. So if you, if you choose to do that, that's fine, but you just have to know that there's an increase in tuition as a result. Um, and so if you want to, um, you know, study abroad, but, but still stay on your budget, then making sure that you're enrolled in the, in the number of courses that would uh, bring you up to an 18 credit hour limit. That's, that's yeah. really important. So well, can I thank you for sharing. Sure. Yes, please, Sandra, please. Yeah. How does it work for graduate students then? Because I'm a, I'm, yeah. um, this is my second semester grad school, so. That's wonderful. Um, and we can, so I'll, I'll probably ask Katie Pollocky to speak to that a little bit as well, because she's, she studied abroad as a, as a graduate student. Um, but I do want to say that that's something that, you know, you would work together with me as a study abroad advisor or any of my team. We have, we have a, we have a team of nine at, at study abroad. And so there's plenty of study abroad advisors and program managers to work with. Um, but I always take pride in helping my education students since that's my, you know, kind of my home. Um, and, uh, you know, we could work with you on figuring out, you know, you, me and your college of education advisor, um, uh, Kevin McCann, who's just a wonderful human being and also a strong advocate for a uh, study abroad. Um, and so the three of us would work together to figure out what would be a good program for you um, and how would it, how and where would it fit in for you and does it work for you? You know, that's another, another kind of key piece is making sure that it works based on what your priority is. Um, because I do have students sometimes who come to me and they say, 
you know, Cara, this maybe only uh, three out of the four classes are going to help me in my semester abroad. What do I do? And I tell them, well, it's up to you to decide what's your priority. You know, if your priority is I'm going to go to Athens, Greece, no matter what, I'm going to have a study abroad experience. Then, you know, they kind of, they say, okay, well, I'm not really going to, that fourth class isn't really going to help me in my degree progress, but I'm going anyway. But if their, pro, if their priority is to, to graduate on time, then maybe we find a different program, a shorter term program, where maybe they're going to Portugal in December instead of Athens for the whole fall, you know, maybe they're doing a shorter term program uh, to, to meet their needs. So it's something that we can work with you on for sure. Um, but we will hear from, from Katie as well about how she planned her, her uh, program abroad as a graduate student. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and then, um, so I just wanted to like um, chime in. I don't know if we probably will get to it, but um, yesterday or m Monday, I was up with, on a study abroad like seminar like this, but it was for COVID. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of like in a pickle because I am in my sophomore year right now. And I was supposed to do a short term study abroad program in March. That was for my like um, vocal seminar class. And then it got canceled because of COVID. And then now it's like, you know, I'm a sophomore. And then, yes, they said on Monday that this year there's going to be no programs running that are short term. And they might do long term if it's worth like the quarantine, like it, that they're doing it by, by program. So, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I just, I think like, I'll probably have to talk to Kevin and McCann and like figure out if it's possible in my junior year because. Yeah. I mean, the pandemic definitely put a wrench right into, into a lot like, of these oh, yeah. plans. And let me say, so all of the spring break programs that would normally be running March, 2021, those we, we had to shift to the summer. So, and, and some of them we did have to cancel because we realized, you know, some of them have border closures where maybe the countries won't let U.S. citizens in or, or you know, there, there are just other challenges on the ground. Maybe the local health context isn't as safe as, as we feel. Like, we want to make responsible decisions when sending students abroad so that we, you know, if we do decide to send students abroad, we want to know that, that, it's, that we're going to be able to support their health and safety while they're there. So you're correct in saying that, yes, that, that all of our spring break programs for next year have kind of, they're not going to run. Some of them have shifted, shifted to summer and some of them have been canceled. We're lucky in that some of our term long programs are still running. We, we were fortunate to send uh, two students to Ireland this fall and two students are, are getting ready to go to France and we've gotten the approvals to do that. And, we're, and the schools that we work with, we feel very comfortable that our partner schools have on-site directors and a support team that can also help our students, you know, uh, once they're on-site and head, get them through quarantine and, and all this stuff. So it, it definitely is a challenging time for study abroad, but it's not impossible, which makes me happy that we're still finding ways to get students abroad. The other thing that's really great is we've been able to innovate and work with partner schools to go virtual. And, you know, uh, our partners in Australia, we're going to be offering, you know, uh, right there, Sandra, Sandra's from, from uh, Sandra, you're from Perth, Australia? Perth, Australia way to represent. <laughs> and so, you know, um, we, this past summer, we were even able to offer virtual international internships for our students this past summer. So we had a good group of students who were gaining really great, you know, real life world work experience, um, you know, just in, 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 uh, in internships. Uh, and I'll give you an example. If we have a company that we, or an organization that we know and, and, and work with in Barcelona, let's say they need a marketing intern or a graphic intern because they have, they need help with designs and they need help with, you know, so there's work to be done. So we've been able to partner, you know, students that, that are majoring in, in marketing and majoring in graphic design and, and have them do the work and do a virtual internship, even though they're here in Chicago, they're working with an organization in Barcelona. So the fact that we can have really neat um, it, it, internships that are still going virtually, uh, the fact that students uh, can still participate in courses at Australian Catholic University 
and do it virtually uh, and, you know, to kind of get around the travel and, and the logistical challenges, that's, that's been a good thing. So I'm hopeful that even though the pandemic is, is challenging to study abroad, that we're still finding ways of, of getting students abroad where it's safe and, and then accommodating students to take courses at these really um, prestigious universities overseas. And, and another good example is uh, Sciences Po in France. Uh, it's kind of like Sciences Politique is, is like the Harvard of France, kind of like the Sorbonne or, you know, it's really renowned. And we have students that, that for the fall are taking a virtual, they're doing their courses virtually there. Uh, and then in January, they're going to actually get to travel to France and, 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 and do their program. So there are ways. <laughs> I, do, I don't want you to be totally discouraged. Yeah, that's very helpful. Thank you. I really okay. appreciate it. Because okay. on Monday, they were kind of like, that, that session was very like kind of sad. Yeah. Like, I understand. You know. Yeah, it's, yeah. you know, and, 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 and it's difficult because I think when you hear study abroad in a pandemic, you kind of automatically think, oh, it's not going to happen. But actually, DePaul is really unique in their response to international education. A lot of schools around us have just made sweeping decisions to cancel all fall programming or cancel all December programming. DePaul has said, let's look at things on a case by case basis, program by program. How well can our partners support our students? Is the local health context better than ours? You know, and they've they've decided, yeah, we can. So we have a we have a student in Budapest, Hungary right now. We have two students in Ireland. We have uh, two that are getting ready to go to, one, one of my students who's going to France is leaving in October. So we do have a small handful uh, of students who are traveling. And, and, I, and I feel very lucky that we can, if, if a student still wants to get abroad, that we can still help support them in their pursuits. So my hope for you is the same, that we can somehow get you abroad next year or get you involved in a, in a virtual internship or program that's going to help you build your skill set. Uh, and another good thing to know is, you know, students that study abroad, there's some great data out of the IIE, the Institute for International Education, that says that students who study abroad are typically hired quicker than their non-study abroad peers. You have a job within six months of graduating, and you tend to earn about $7,000 more annually than your non-study abroad peers. As long as you highlight that in your resume and learn how to articulate your skills in an interview, it really is a, is a great direct economic benefit um, to you after graduation. So, um, and especially, sorry, especially as a teacher, uh, I know for me, I, when I studied abroad and then graduated at DePaul, I became a teacher in Chicago Public Schools. And wow, was I able to use a lot of the soft skills that I learned on study abroad right in my own classroom. You know, having intercultural communication skills, navigate how to tolerate ambiguity, uh, navigating new environments, new landscapes, it was, it, that stuff was key. So anyway, I, I, I can't recommend it enough. <laughs> yeah, I just want to piggyback on that. You know, uh, pre-pandemic, um, I would always say to our students, you know, study abroad is something that's going to open your mind like no book can. Mm -hmm. You know, and your willingness to go abroad, as they say, study abroad, uh, will will be forever a change in your life because it's a huge step that you made you made the step to come to college now you want to study abroad you know all those connections are great one of the things that students are tasked with is making sure that they know exactly what's going to happen with their credits how their tr uh, credits are going to transfer back how this is going to affect their program and in the 16 years that I've been at DePaul, I can honestly tell you, you have an academic advisor in the College of Ed. We have also worked so hard with our partners in study abroad, where you'll feel like you have one advisor speaking the same language. Because uh, in many cases, you'll hear something from somebody and something from somebody else. And in the end, it's not going to make a difference unless it's part of your program. So always go into it knowing what you want to get out of it, how it's going to affect your timeline at DePaul, how it's going to affect your uh, credit hours and your pathway to uh, achieving your goals as quickly as you want to. But always documenting the steps. 
because if you're called upon to, to say, okay, Gabby, how did you do this? You'll be able to say, well, on day one, I did blah, 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 blah. And it goes down all the way. That way you're documenting your journey, but you also have that document to stand up and be there for you. Cause many people are like, oh, I thought I was gonna get nine credits and I only got six credits. You'll have all the background information that you have received. So you'll be the owner of that information. And that will help you too, because when you, um, when you plan your life around the, the options and the opportunities you have, it'll help you going forward, especially if you're going to be a teacher. Hmm. So I, I, I'm serious. I would reach out to Kara after this, Gabby, and see what your various uh, options are. Because just like we're all Zooming, no matter where we are, we could say we're in Chicago, but we might not be, but nobody knows that. You might be able to have that experience and get it all done without the stress and the worry about the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. I appreciate I appreciate your your commentary. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Cuz yeah. it's true. I mean, really in in a lot of ways there've been some some really neat advantages to you know, to how we're using technology, you know, in in this in this era. Um wonderful. Well, I think um I think I would like to uh, you know, allow some time for for Katie to share her experience and tell us about herself, tell us about her program, um, how you decided on that program and how did that relate to what you were studying and 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 if you could share any advice that you would also give to to our to to our students. Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Katie Pollocky. I just graduated in June with a master's of education in counseling for counseling and student affairs. Um, I went on the Portugal trip. It was the assessment and treatment of chemical dependency. So for masters of education and counseling, for my specific um, area of concentration, I didn't need this class, but I did need it in order to get the certification that I wanted to get to be a licensed professional counselor. So that's why I chose that, that one in general. It's the first year that they ever um, had it. So it was kind of a trial period, but it was an amazing experience. Um, I do know that someone on the trip was actually a sociology, she was a, what was she, social work major um, in her own master's program. And she had talked with her academic advisor and the study abroad advisors and had worked it out with her program in order to get credit for her program through doing this study abroad experience. So that's definitely a piece of advice that I want to impart is if you find other experiences that closely align with maybe one of your requirements, um, with ours being such a new program, you know, they hadn't really thought yet, like, well, maybe social work. Well, she found it, she went for it, and she was able to get credit for going. Um, also, there were a couple of people on the trip who had already gotten credit for that specific class in that track. And they were actually given um, credit for like sort of an advanced version of that class. So they had to do different, assi different assignments than we do and all of that. Um, because they wanted to study abroad so badly, they were like, you know what, I'm going to do this anyway. Um, so my specific experience was short term. It was over um, December of 2019. So this past December. And it was two weeks in Portugal. We did have a weekend trip to Oporto, which I have to say is actually my favorite city in Portugal, though I do love Lisbon. That is where we stayed most of the time. Um, Porto is very gorgeous, and that's actually where this picture is taken. Um, so I decided on this program, I'd always wanted to study abroad. Um, higher education is where I'd like to take my career. Um, so anything that is going to align with that is something that I wanted to sort of experience and study abroad is one of those things. I actually also had the privilege of working in the study abroad office this past year and absolutely loved that area of higher education as well. So it sort of opened my eyes to a different area that I could get into. Um, something else that I can say is 
you know, now I can definitely speak to a lot, being able to work with diverse populations, understanding different cultural views. There's all sorts of different talking points that I can have in my interviews and on my resume and cover letter now because I had that experience. Um, and I guess lastly is just the connections that you make on these trips are just absolutely so valuable. I made so many good connections and those people right now are helping me in my current job search. Some of these people are like, oh, hey, I heard this and this university is hiring or I know that department is hiring. And so th through those connections, I 100% believe that's where I'm gonna be getting my next position. So the connections that you make in, in education, it's really important to have connections. If you know someone who works in a certain school, they're gonna be able to get your resume in front of the, of, on top of the resume pile, if you will. They're gonna be able to get it in front of the right people. And those referrals are really invaluable. So I think that study abroad can help you make those connections in such a way that you really aren't able to just going to classes, especially now with having more online classes, you're not in class with people that much anymore. And having those experiences where you have to have group projects and um, you know, more intimate encounters with your, your classmates is really gonna help a lot with your placement after you've graduated. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. And, and um, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that Porto was, your, was one of your favorite places, but I'm also really glad to hear that, that you, you know, you've made friends on the program and that, that this has led to networking and, and, and sharing and you know, getting references from each other. I think, I think that is really important in, in the world of education, um, you know, and, and, and utilizing the network, you know. Um, not only developing new friendships, but utilizing that network. So um, thank you so much for, for sharing about, you know, your time um, in Portugal and, and you know, and, and, and what you learned and, and, and how it was helpful for you. Congratulations on graduating also. Um, and thank you again for your work as a senior peer advisor in our office. We, we miss you. <laughs> um, and so at this point, I would like to open it up, uh, you know, to more questions. I know, uh, Gabby and Kishanda, this is, has been great, you know, for you to, to kind of ask questions as we're having this conversation. And, and um, you know, if you have any questions for Katie or, or additional questions for me or, or Nancy or Sandra, then we're happy to, to share information with you. Um, you know, I, I was going to say, as, uh, as, you know, the days and the weeks kind of go on, if you're, if you're, if you have additional questions that arise, I know for me, um, whenever I, I, I talk with folks, um, I have to kind of internalize it and sit with with things for a little bit. And then it always happens where, you know, 30 minutes later, I'm like, oh, I should have asked this one thing, you know. So if that happens for you, like it happens for me, um, you know, feel free to take a screenshot or screen grab of our email addresses. I've listed um, emails for me and Nancy and Sandra and Katie, so that if you have other questions moving forward, you're always welcome to reach out to us. We're happy to share information uh, with you.